Okay, everyone. Tara Argel here, and um, bear with me. I'm new to this videoing thing, so I may fumble a little bit, make some mistakes, but I hope to get better at it and create some videos about things that you ask me about in my art. So today I'm going to do a video on how I made my realistic looking fish for a commission that I was hired to do. So my client asked me to create and she gave me specific um, kinds of fish <coughs> that she wanted me to create. So she told me she wanted a northern, a sunfish, a perch, and a walleye. So I went and found these photos. These are the photos I worked from. So I found some really good photos with some great coloring. And then um, I'll show you the finished product and now I'll and then I'll show you how I got there. So here's my sunfish that I created from that picture. And then here is the perch that I created from that picture. And then here is the northern that I created from that picture. And then here is the perch that I created from that picture. So let me show you how I do this. So first thing, like I said, was getting my images. And then what I did next was, and I'll show you, this is the the northern, I believe. Um, I got got my, I took and did a drawing of my image. So let me pull that uh, picture so you can track along with it. Yep, that's, so that's the northern. So I drew my image. And what I like to do is to be kind of exact about, um, you know, kind of where the coloring changes and stuff, because I'm going to be working over this and I'll show you how um, I do that. But so you'll want to do a really good drawing and kind of have um, it mapped out. And then what you do is you're going to take a sheet of plastic. What we're creating is we're creating skins. So these fish that I created are pliable. They're, they're a skin. And so the beauty of this is, is when you are done, you can take this fish and try it over the different backgrounds that you might want to put it on before you have to make and commit. And I'll show you that process too. So this is what we're going to make. So I take, not this image, but I take the drawing and I take my piece of plastic. Now this is a really thick plastic. It's actually, I got it at the hardware store. It's a big, heavy plastic. I think it's used for covering for painting or something like that, but it's a real heavy grade plastic. And it's kind of dirty because I use it a lot. But, um, and then what I do is I'll take my blue painter's tape and I'll tape it to the back of the drawing on all four sides so it stays nice and secure. So I got, I, I'm not going to tape it now, but I have it all taped. And then I have my reference photo here. And then I look at the coloring in the fish. So if you can see um, up close, you can see that you can, you can see the layers if you're thinking from a jelly um, plate perspective. Looks like there's a base layer that maybe is like this color, maybe mixed with a little bit of yellow. And so that's what I used. I used dark titanium, or did I do, I think I used light titanium. This one is dark, but I used a titanium and then a Naples yellow. And then what I did is if I had, would have had a stencil, I would have just grabbed that, but um, I didn't. So I created a stencil out of this mylar of the print of those little circles. And so on my jelly plate, I took these two colors, rolled it out or mixed it up on a separate jelly plate. And then I laid this over my jelly plate and used my brayer and made this design 
right away on, sorry that my plate's so dirty. I just got done with my whole projects. But I made that, this yellow, yellow line stuff on my plate as the first layer. I let it dry totally. And then if you look at this, you can see there's a lot darker greens that come into play. And so I used, for the darker greens, I used, um, let's see, where are my, my paints? I used, um, I used this one, um, chrome oxide green, and I used the gray, green gray, I love this color. I use those two together with a little, just a pinch of blue, swirled it around on on my, uh, I have a second gel plate where I mix the color. And then I did, I, I did the darkest color that I made at the top. Then I did a medium with less blue in the middle and rolled that out more of the gray green and, um, and the other green. And then at the bottom, I did more of this gray green and then this to cover the lower level. So I had all three of the variations of this fish. And I gently, I, I rolled it out and then I just gave a quick swipe so I didn't smear the stuff and made the layers on here. And then when it was all done, I took and used um, matte medium and put that over the whole thing, a light layer of it. And then I took a print. Now, when I do prints for collaging, because that's what we're going to, we'd be doing is collaging, is I use a combination of a heavy grade um, tissue paper, and then I also use these deli sheets. So, depending on what I'm going to use it for in collage, I think about, okay, so with this, I'm pretty much creating, and let me show you the paper that I made. It's pretty beat up because I cut from it. But this is kind of how the paper turned out. I already used the lower, lighter colors. But this is kind of how it turned out. And the cool thing about it is, you know, the fish has some of those lines that are in there that just kind of happened. And so this turned out pretty cool, I think, to get the pattern looking like the real fish. So that's how I did this fish. And then I created some other just solids and looked at the colors underneath here. And um, I think I used uh, this color as a base. I used the, the you know lighter greens as a base. And then what I did for the final thing is I came over on the fins with my Posca pens. Now, if you haven't never used Posca pens, you need to get some because I can't imagine not having them in my arsenal. So the colors that I used on the fins for my Poscas is I used um, I used these two colors, this color. Um, what else did I use? I think that's about it. But I went in and did some of the lining. And then Poscas are really cool because I could then kind of take my finger and kind of, you know, kind of smear it around and let it blend. So I use that. And then I also used, um, let me grab that other pen that I used for the white. I used a gel pen. I like the fine tip of this for the white. So the white parts here are this, but everything else um, is collage. And so as I did my collage, I want to share with you, so like if I did this fin shape and I wanted to cut out a piece of paper, what I do actually is I'll take a piece of, um, off the edges of my print. Let me grab something here and show you what I do. I take a piece and, um, I'll take it over my drawing here. Let me move the gel plate. I'll lay it over this if I want to get it exact. And I'll grab a pencil or a Sharpie. And I'll trace the shape that I want. And get the exact shape. Well, this, this Sharpie's kind of dried out. And then I'll lay it over my paper. And I'll just take a scissor and cut it out. So then 
Um, I use this kind of brush and I use this kind of brush for adhering. So I like this one. This one, I this is the same brush that Elizabeth St. Hilaire uses for her collage. I really like this. And I use um, gloss medium for my fish. So I, I would take and lay down a layer of gloss medium over that. And then I would take the cutout that I make from this and I would lay it right on there. And this is really a good thing for smoothing it out. Um, you can also use like rice paper instead of deli, but I like, I, I do most of my gel printing on tissue or jelly, jelly, or I mean, uh, uh, deli paper. And how I decide if I use deli paper or if I'm going to use tissue paper, I use deli paper if I'm able to make the exact design and I'm going to take that exact design, which I did on the body here, um, I will I will do that print on deli because it's really heavy duty and nice to work with. Now, I'll show you on some of the other fish. If I need to layer to get the design, which I did on the sunfish and a couple others, I'll use tissue paper because that goes transparent and just the paint shows up. So I can layer with the tissue paper. Okay, so then as you go along, you'll be filling this all in like a puzzle with your collage. So, you know, it'll be um, coming to, to shape as you go along. And so I use the glass medium over that. So um, I asked a question in the group, you know, when I got done with the Posca pens, you have to be careful because sometimes they will smear. They they don't, don't always stay forever. So um, one of the gals in the group reminded me, you know, if I'm all done with this and I've got the Posca pens on here, I can do a layer of gloss or matte medium on my plate but make sure it's clean because it might pick up some of this gunk so I would I wouldn't do it on this plate I'd clean it real good first matte medium or glass medium and then I would lay this over and then you know get that medium on there and that would seal the marker just great so that would save us from having to spray it with varnish or what have you so that's how I did the northern so little drawing um little layering making a print but I'm basically, you know, jelly printing. And then I also did just a straight using my, I love the golden paints. I got the silver here using the golden iridescent silver. And then I also love this color. And I know I'm, I'm going to be, we're going to run out of this because they're not going to make it anymore. But I, I use this color too on the sunfish and others. So I'm going to move the northern. We're done with talking about him. And let me see here if there's anything. Oh, okay. So now I move to my perch. And the perch drawing, I did like this. So I made sure. And I marked like where this iridescent line is. And so when I created, when I looked at this fish, let me get my image that I worked from. When I created this fish, I could see that I needed to make, um, let's see, where did my, where did my picture go? Here you, nope, that's not it. Perch, I can find everyone but that one, of course. But I could see in the picture that there was a nice iridescent, um, what the heck, where did that go? Nice iridescent kind of glisten across the top here. So I knew that I had to layer on this bad boy because um, there was there was some some effects that I needed to do. And so, oh, here is my picture. Awesome. So you can see kind of the iridescent here that I knew I needed to create. And so I needed to get this body too. And this is where I'll show you um, the corn on the cob technique that I used. I'll do a little demo for you. Um, but I really used the corn on the cob technique with the sunfish. That was really what got me to go, oh my gosh, I need to find a way to make that texture because the sunfish, my goodness, look at, doesn't that look like little, little cobs of corn or little pieces of the corn? So, um, so with this one, I created the main, the main, let's see if I have any left. Oh, I have a lot left. Okay. So for this one, I used corn, the corn on the cob technique for this one. And I, 
didn't have a clean plate, so there's some other colors that showed up. But I don't always mind that because it's always kind of fun how that happens. So the body of the fish, I needed to have um, kind of a variation of this kind of titanium color and, you know, the green, the greenish color. So I knew I needed to have a sheet like this, and then it wouldn't hurt to have a little bit of the darker blue too. And then I knew I needed to create um, another sheet that had, um, you know, for this, for these stripes, I knew I needed a darker piece. And so I had, you know, this, is, I went to create a background for the first one. And so I used the darker blues here, but this was just a jelly print of rolling burnt sienna. I used this dark green. I used um, this cerulean blue hue and of course this green gray these are the colors so raw sienna green gray um cerulean blue and then the chrome oxide green and these are all just liquitex or master's touch doesn't have to be fancy paints by any by any way it means or shape so this is what i used and then again i would just go and take you know, a, a something I can see through and trace the shape, cut it out on what I needed, glue it down and kind of layer up. And then to create this iridescent little stretch here, I used the corn cob method and I used um, gold. I used, um, whoops, where's my gold at? Did I grab that? Yes, I did. Okay, I used, I'll tell you an art table can never be big enough, can it? I used this gold and used the corn cob technique and created this gold. And then when you glue it over, it goes transparent and just the color shows. So that's how I did the iridescence on here. And then how I did the fins, is I picked you know, the colors that I needed. I'll just show you this sheet. This isn't the exact one for this fish, but I just put a layering. This is for one of the other ones. I didn't end up using this. This wasn't the right color, but I did for each of the fish made their own thing. And remember, this is the thing I did. I think that's why I didn't use this one. If I want the fin lines to go this way, when I'm on my jelly plate, I need to make the fish lines go that way because it'll reverse so I use this little toy this block from that I got that has this and I literally just went in the paint and made like the curved look and then with this one um, I went in with uh, my pens and enhanced the look of the fin because I couldn't get it exactly but you can see here the the marks and it helped make the fin look like like the fin does in the picture. Um, and again, I used some Posca pens over the top of this as well. Um, the body down here, I did a lighter color in a pull. I don't know if I have any of that left. I think it might have come from, yeah, came from this one. And I used, on this one, I used the gold and I used the the two different greens I believe on here and did that to create the underbelly on this lighter color so you really got to look at the coloring you know whatever you're doing and see do I need to create little bits that I would layer on top of each other or can I do it as a layered one pull thing and then do it that way and then the fins I just cut out and glued on. And as you can see, I haven't totally cleaned these up, but the, the medium will come off. But these are these are skins, which are so cool. And then the thing about it, what I was telling you, that you can try it on with backgrounds. I hadn't asked my client yet what she wanted, how she wanted the fish displayed. So I did a little testing and did a jelly print um, on this canvas. So this was using the masks and layering. And then I thought, you know, how cool is that? I could lay that fish in that environment. All the fish look pretty good. But I actually did it for the sunfish that I did. And But I found out that she wants these fish just on a white background, which 
okay, whatever. But look at how cool that is. You can try it out on different backgrounds to see if it's even going to work and um, before you glue it down. So that's just a background I created. I'll use it for something else. But um, so, yeah, that's how I did that. So let me demo um, the the uh, corn on the cob technique so you can see how to do that. And I always like to have, um, I take a, a foam core kind of board I like to work on because my table gets so dirty and that stuff will pick up on something sticky. So I use this because if I get something on there, it stays and it's not going to come off on what I'm working on. So here is my, my uh, jelly plate. And then I'm going to use this little one alongside. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'll do an actual live demo, but I'm going to move the fish here so I don't mess them up while I'm doing the demo. That would be, ah, I would be so proud. I would be so upset. So let me make sure I get these out of the way. I don't want to screw anything up while I'm doing the demo here. So I'll put these out of the way. All right. Okay. So you'll need Play-Doh, it doesn't matter what color or whatever this is actually used. And I have a cob of corn. And I'm going to, I'll use, let me show you, what color should I use? I'll use a color that you can see really good. I'm just going to use, let's, let's use, um, I'm going to use a cheaper paint here for a demo. I'm going to just use... I'll just, no, oh, that's not going to show as good. I'll just use, let's see. I'm going to use a color you can see really good. I'll use this turquoise. So I'm going to take, and this is, I used my, um, for the sunfish, I used this for a layer to layer up on the colors <clears throat> and a couple others. But I love the golden paints because they're most of them are very transparent and so when you lay that down on tissue paper over something, it goes transparent except for the color. And you can do magical things with that. And here's the deal, guys. If you're like, gosh, I really struggle figuring out what color to use, I here's a little trick that I use. I don't know how many of you know what a pendulum is. I have a pendulum here. And, you know, I can literally ask questions tapping into the energy. So... I can ask for working on this sunfish um, and with a pendulum, you get yeses and nos. I can talk more about that later. If you have questions, just let me know. But I can ask for using the sunfish, would this be a great color to use on the body? Now I get a no. And I, I mean, it's kind of Captain Obvious here. But if I wasn't sure, I could ask, would this do what I'm, what I'm wanting it to do? And I would be really descriptive that will this layer over and look like the body of the sunfish and if I get a yes then I know I'm on the right track so I use my pendulum a lot in deciding colors or like what my client my if I have a commission what my client wants best so I can check would she like this background the best is this what she's looking for for the final result or whatever and I can use my pendulum to kind of figure some of those things out so I don't have to sit and wonder. So you take your, your Play-Doh and you just take and you can use a, a rolling pin. I don't have one out here. So I just took my palm like this and I just flattened it out. You can see it's got some of the paint on lighter. But it, you know, you got to kind of get your, get your body into it and get that flattened out. A rolling pin would work wonderful. Then you take your corn on the cob and you I just literally pushed it in into the play-doh. So I and then there's on the side here didn't because I don't have it totally flat. And then I just rolled it out. So I have a really good rendering of the design of that. And somebody asked in the questions, like, why wouldn't you just take the corn and print? Well, the problem is is this isn't really absorbent. And as I roll it over, um, it's going to get full of paint. I won't be able to use it again. I use the same corn on the cob for all the fish. And, I, you know, it's still pretty clean. And um, 
but you can get a flat rendering, which makes this so much easier. So then I'll take my plate, I'll squeeze out a little paint, take my brayer and I'll roll out, roll out the paint, get a nice even layer. And this will really show you how, how the pattern shows up. And then I will take the Play-Doh and I will take the printed side down and I'll just lightly push it in and then move it over like this and move it over and it's sticking on there some. And you can take this and plaster it on a piece of paper too if you want. Push it in and push it in like this. And then I kind of look and think, oh, this area didn't get very good, so I might push a little there, push a little there. And I'm not caring if it's not the perfect image. I just want this texture because that's kind of how the fish's body looks, doesn't it? So you see I've got a nice um, nice uh, thing on there. And so I'll, I'll do a little pull with, let's see, do I have any tissue paper close by? Oh. Uh, I might have a little corner. Yeah, I have a little corner. So I will do a pull on here, half with the deli, and I'll just put that on there. And then I'll take the tissue here that I have. I have a little spot, and I'll take, and I'll show you the difference of how using them. And then I'll put the tissue paper on there. I'll just roll, rub it real good, pull it up. So you can see it kind of has that fish body look. And then this one will be a little more heavy duty, depending on your need. So I wouldn't, I, you still can use this for layering and, and deli paper does go transparent, but not as transparent as tissue. So I've got my print. Now let's maybe take, I'll take this and I'll grab my glass medium and let's just, I'll show you I'll tear, let that dry a little bit. But I'll take a little bit of this blue, that turquoise that we just did. And then let me find that other one I did for the fish. And let's layer it and I'll show you how it looks as you layer it up. Where did that piece go? Tell you, I've got, from the doing the four fish, I've got prints all over the place. I got a lot of extra prints, but I'll be able to use those, you know, um, in other projects. Let, let's just layer it over the top of a piece of this. So I'll take this and I'll take a little, you can see that it's got a little bit of texture to it. And I'll put some glass medium over that and I'll take the tissue and then I'll I'll uh, glue it down and you can see that you can see the stuff below so you if it was a brighter color it would show through and then you could see that you know you've got a nice you, you can keep layering till you get the desired look now with a piece of let me grab another one here and show you with the with the deli so with the deli stuff, this is thicker. Get a little area that has. With the deli paper, I'll put a little bit of medium on there. So you can see how it looks before I start. And then I'll take the deli paper. And so this is deli over deli. And you can see through it, but not quite as good. Not quite as good as you can with uh, with the tissue, let me hold the two up. So this is the tissue and this is the deli. So they both go transparent, but if I'm gonna layer, I really like the tissue paper and it's a, it's a heavier strength. You can use just dollar store tissue too, but um, yeah, and then when that dries, you'll be able to see, you know, how it looks. So then as you are, after you get done doing, um, you know, working on the fish, let me grab one of these again. And you, so here's the fish and you have the plastic over the top. 
and you've got it all glued, all glued up, and um, you're all done. You let it dry totally. And so there's going to be all kinds of medium all over this from you gluing things on. And possibly, and you'll have, I always glue over the top as well. So then when you're done, you have your fish, which now is covered in the plastic medium. Okay, this is what, it'll be on top like this. And then I take a tool, something like this, and I'll find a little edge you know, somewhere, and then I'll just go and kind of loosen it up from where it was sticking on. And then when it comes up, it'll be like this. <clears throat> and then you have a, a plastic skin with your artwork on it. And then again, you can try on the different, different backgrounds and say, oh, I like that. Now my client wants it on a plain white background, so let's flip this over. I suppose with a mat and a frame, it might look kind of striking. Um, personally for me, that would be not my choice. So I'm glad that I checked in using my pendulum and I got that she wanted it plain. So I called her just to double check before I made any final moves. And I haven't secured them down yet because I had to um, uh, make sure that the, the I didn't want to go through all this work and have my Posca pen smear. So I did take the time to um, do the sealing over the top. And so these are good to go now. So when I glue it down, I will use um, probably a matte medium. Um, I will probably use watercolor paper and find a size that gives enough room so if they want to mat it, mat it all the way around, they can before they frame it. And then I will have no problem, you know, securing it down and painting over the top. And then I suppose your signature, make sure you allow for, um, you know, uh, if they're going to put a mat on it, I you, you might not know how they're going to frame it. So I would do your signature up close to the fish. But there you have it. So... Um, I was thinking this technique would be fun with a lot of different things. So maybe I have some fun ideas in the hopper. So if I think of something that you guys might like, I will do another video. I'm going to start a channel. I get asked a lot how I do the things I do. So I'm going to start a, a YouTube channel. And I think I'm, if it's available, I'm going to call it Tara Argo, the Intuitive Artist. Um, and so I will post this video from that, um, YouTube channel. So then if you want to like or subscribe for more things that I might share with you, then we can keep connecting. But that's the corn cob method. And, you know, I just, I, you can use that Play-Doh over any texture. Like you could put a basket, push a basket into it. You could put it over anything that has texture. So the possibilities for this Play-Doh technique that I saw in this group, someone posted this, someone did the Play-Doh demonstration and my gosh, you guys, it's amazing how when we share our techniques with each other, how one technique can open up a world of opportunities and creativity. So I'm really grateful whoever, I can't remember her name, but you know who you are, and thank you so much for sharing that. It came right at the time when I was trying to figure out how to do fish scales to make it look realistic because that's what's, that's what's really important to me is to have this. I wanted it to look really realistic because these people are fisher people. And if I would have tried to paint this with my brush, it would have never turned out like this fish did. This, this kind of blew me away. Um, how realistic it could look using our jelly prints. So what a fun medium we all do. And so thank you for watching. If you have any questions, just post them and I will, um, I will be around more. I'm hoping to do more videos. So thank you for bearing with me on my, my, uh, equipment fail there. I'll get better at this as I practice. So practice makes perfect. So thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.